cracker, George. Thank you. Uh, Group D table looks like this. Maybe surprising to some, but it is Austria who sit top on six points. France going through in second place on five. And the Dutch, as George rightly says, have to think again. But they are still in it, finishing in third place. Poland, as we already know, going home. Well, what about these for scenes, Kevin? You know, we talked about this at halftime. Could you see it? But in fairness to the Austrians, they played yeah. right through and deserved every minute of that win. Absolutely deserved it. For once, we're right beforehand, Jackie. We said it'd be a good game. We talked. <laughs> Who'd be we a We talked it up enough anyway. In a fairness, they delivered. And as we all spoke about Austria, you know what to do. Get forward in numbers, get people in the box. Not exactly brilliant build-up play at times, but they battle and they fight and they create chances. You think they've let it all slip then when uh, the Dutch equalise with a very good goal, but they come back down the other end and go again. And uh, yeah, really nice to see a team who isn't expected to top a group, top a group. And then all of a sudden it flips in France, who've scored two goals, one an OG and one a penalty. And all of a sudden they look like they're struggling. So yeah, yeah, really interesting group. You look at those scenes in France and I think, you know, for, for Poland, obviously devastation. You see Lewandowski there going home, disappointment for them. But I think France generally, they'll have a lot to ponder as well, Didi, mm. after another stuttering performance. Yeah, 100%. The best game they probably played was the first one against, uh, against Austria, where the Austrians probably didn't deserve to lose. Um, a very tired draw against uh, the Netherlands and another draw against Poland, a team that's already been eliminated so um yeah the man seeing in shot played with a mask but uh yeah obviously a huge concern then you've got to say they can defend they only conceded well one goal uh, today there was a penalty and i think they probably know going into the knockout stages they may only need to score one or two to win games so you know i wouldn't I wouldn't count it against them, but at the same time, uh, to come out of the group with uh, in three games with one penalty and an no goal uh, is certainly not what they expected or what we expected. The difficulty for them is the side of the draw. France now have Portugal, Germany, and Spain for company on that side of the draw, while the Austrians might be the happiest of all to be on the other side of it now, Shea, after this. And you can see what it means to their fans and to the players on the pitch there. Yeah, great scenes for, for the Austrians, it really is. I think. It, I think it shows a real together. I think the other men I mentioned before the game, this they seem a team together, you know, with the manager, the coaching staff and the fans. And, and it's amazing, Jackie, when you have that togetherness as a team and the team spirit and, and the will to go that extra yard and, and the extra tackle, get bodies on the line, you know, block shots and what have you. It's it's, it's absolutely brilliant to see and, and, and again it's a it's a brilliant story for them. No no one would have given them a chance to top in the group beforehand. Um, and they deserved it. It's not by luck or by by chance at the top of the group and, and as you say the next you know they're going to have a fair bill will draw on the next thing um, but going back to France I don't think France or, or, or the Netherlands will worry too much you know if you're going to win it which they've got aspirations of doing then they have to beat whoever they come up against um, but it's brilliant it's a brilliant day for, for Austria great scenes yeah and, and we've just seen the shot here David Alaba he's uh, done his mm. crucial ligament about yeah. six months ago the manager asked him Rangnick he said no no I want to be part of the coaching staff non-playing staff whatever you want to call it so there are shots of him with a team, obviously a huge influence, he's a captain of that team. I think he's been Austrian Football of the Year ten times, he won multiple Champions Leagues, um, won the Bundesliga with, with Munich numerous times, and he goes there, not playing, obviously he's doing his rehab there, and supports the team. Uh, the goalkeeper Schlager, he got injured in the second last game of the season for Salzburg, he's out. Uh, the other Schlager from Leipzig, a key player in the middle of midfield, uh, centre midfield, he got injured. He done his crucial ligament. He's missing. So they've got three, four really important players missing. But I think what it did, it only brought them closer together. And we've just seen a shot after the, after the final whistle where Rangnick is hugging Anautovic. Now, I think Anautovic probably cost a few managers <laughs> their jobs um, w w without knowing it. Yeah? Uh, and Rangnick, a, a strict disciplinarian, um, where everybody knows you have to work for the team. If you don't work for the team, you won't have a place in the team. He found a way to turn this man around. Shea played with him. He's 34, 35 years of age. Got his own mind. Obviously, always been a hugely talented player. And he got something into his head where he knows if I don't do this, I can't be part of it. So what am I going to do? Either, you know, he captain the team today, either I'm in, Oh, I don't do it, and I'm at home. And he's gone to the tournament. He played a, a 
a big part in the three games on Altovic because we've seen again when he holds the ball up, he's got a big influence on the team. Uh, it's just brilliant to see when, he, when you bring all these different characters together and they all work for the team. And, and you just said it, they are in the other half of the jaw. Uh, watch out. Yeah, well, there are a lot of people's tip and after that, who knows? And an, an awful lot of goals for us to look back on in that second half. And Shea, it started good and early anyway. The mm. Dutch got straight back into this one, almost two minutes on the clock in the second half. Yeah, we said Koeman would be angry at half-time and, and obviously got a bit of a rollicking. Um, to be fair, Austria come out of the second half and they were on the attack and the ball was given away to the Grealich high up the pitch and then Xavi Simons breaks, of course. We know Gakpo then loves his right foot, loves to cut inside. It's poor defending, if I'm being honest, by, by Lionheart. He's got to get him outside the goal. You know, it gives it away on, in the offensive uh, third there, but the defender here, Jack, has got to throw him outside, get him away from the goal. What he does, he, he goes too quick, rushes it. It's a brilliant finish, don't get me wrong. Gakpo, brilliant right foot, as we know, but again, poor defending from, from Austria. And um, was a great start to the second half for, for the Netherlands. Yeah, it was. It set it up nicely. But credit to the Austrians, Didi. Yeah. They, they took the fight again and <laughs> yeah. managed to get themselves ahead. Yeah, they don't mind the scrap. And we <laughs> they praised, definitely don't. We, we praised the, the Dutch uh, defence, but they were very casual today. Uh, lacked urgency here. This, um, they've got seven, eight people behind the ball. Grilich gets the ball, puts a great ball in. And Romano Schmid, he's only about five foot six, I think. He's probably the smallest player on the pitch. Um, he gets in at the, at the, at the far post. Um, I think De Vries on the line. I think he's got to use his, his other leg. If De Vries goes with his left leg, I think he can clear this. But this is another thing. They're just not ready. They always reacted to things. They weren't proactive and uh, got punished there with a, with a goal uh, shortly after they equalised. And he thought, oh, they will be coming out. They've got a chance to win the game and maybe even top the group. Two or three minutes later, they were behind again. Yeah, well, it was just a crazy second half, though, Kevin, because uh -huh. it was just goals coming at us. There was VAR checks. Some of them have been quick. This one probably wasn't. Maybe they took a little bit longer over the Depay one than they needed to. Yeah, none of us could figure out what was going on here, why he was <laughs> checking it for handball. It was so obvious he wasn't. But they just brought on Horst, and I suppose this is why, to give you a different option. Big man to little man. Wins the header. And in fairness to Depay, I didn't think he'd been that good in the previous two games. Today, he was very good for them. He held up everything he'd played like a real number nine. And he gets his goal, deservedly, for all his work. Really good touch and a fabulous finish. Honestly, slow motion there. It doesn't look as difficult as it is. But fabulous touch and finish. The referee took an age to tell us that it wasn't handball. Um, what is he seeing he there that the, it took him know, so long? I, I think not why he sent him to the monitor, but we yeah. can see after one take, it's not a handball. You, you wonder why they just can't tell him he got the decision wrong. He has to go and realise himself he got the decision wrong, but it was a, um, a really good knockdown from Vigars. And you think, that's it now. They're on the front foot. They've got back in the game. Not to be. He's got his hands away from the body purely for that reason. Purely for that reason, because he doesn't want to handle it. So it took him two or three minutes before they send the referee out. Why they do they need to send him out? I do not know, because in the past there were decisions where they just told him it was wrong, change it. Um, so it's a it's a four or five minute delay and uh, yeah the referee had a had a great view of the of the goal as well so um, yeah the referee didn't do himself justice and I think the video assistant um, yeah should have done better as well especially when they've got so many of them right so quickly but mm. the drama didn't end there because Austria get the winner and it's no more than what they deserved Shay from the way that this game went yeah well. Doyler takes uh, credit for the V course and he takes credit for Sabitzer's goal as well. I mean, this, <laughs> this is a, a lot brilliant... to take credit for <laughs> when you're sitting on a he's couch. Getting a, he's getting a pay rise this <laughs> one in the morning, but it's a brilliant pass actually from uh, Bergartner. You know, this with outside of his foot when it comes into him. Sabitzer just rubs off it, runs off the fender, but outside of his right foot, way to pass is brilliant. And then he lifts it high because Verbruggen comes out, tries to close the angle, and it's a, it's a brilliant finish. Some people go, why is the keeper getting beat there at his near post? But, I've been in that position many times myself. It just flies over his head before he can get his arms up, and it's a, you know, it's a brilliant finish for Schambritzer and deserves a one any goal. You'd be happy with a finish like that, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, fabulous finish. It's, it's the only place that can go because if you see the keeper and the way he's blocked block the angle and the body shape he makes, it's the only place he can put. Fabulous strike. Um, great energy to still be going there from him in the 80 odd minute and from all of them. Fabulous finish. Um, we didn't think it was going to be over at that stage. There was going to be more goals in the game, but they managed to. Uh, to hold on and did so fairly well um, in the end. Yeah, listen, absolutely magnificent victory for Austria and they do top the group.